Let's make a value scale. We will paint the still life using just black and white paint. But before we do that, we need to understand how to work with value. Value is going to be what creates the illusion of light in our paintings. It's what makes our objects appear to have weight and mass, and our paintings overall look three-dimensional, like they have depth. We need to know which values to use, when to use them, how to mix the ones we want, how to know what we even want, and we're going to do this by creating a tool called a value scale. After you've practiced mixing black and white paint to create a bunch of grays, we will practice organizing those grays in order from light to dark. Value in art is essentially how light or dark something is on a scale of white to black. So if you have some room left on this page, otherwise go to the next page, draw a long rectangle and divide it into seven sections. I put a W on one end for white and a B on the other end of the scale for black. And then I just labeled each of the sections with a number, one through seven. I'm adding some medium to the paint. Remember medium, it looks white, but when it dries, it's gonna be transparent. I'm just adding it to give this paint a little bit of body, but it won't affect the color of the paint. It can be hard to see the difference between the medium and the white paint. So I'm spending a lot of time mixing them up so that when this is dry, I have a swatch of white paint that fully covers my paper and has no transparent streaks of medium running through it. I'm ready to paint my first swatch. So I get my brush wet, pick up some of that paint medium mixture and apply it to that first rectangle. I'm using a flat brush that's um, a little bit smaller than the width of the rectangle, um, but you could use one that's the exact width of the rectangle if you like. You just don't want to use a brush that's wider than the width of the rectangle, otherwise you're going to have to paint uh, sideways. It's just easier to do long downward strokes and quicker. I'm cleaning all the white paint off of my palette knife because now I'm going to start on the other end. So I'm going to get some black and some medium and I'm going to start mixing those together. And then I'm going to apply it on the other side of the scale. Rather than washing this brush that's full of white paint, I'm going to switch to a new brush. I don't want to waste all that white paint that's in the brush for one, but for two, remember this is supposed to be pure black directly from the tube and I don't want to have even a tiny little trace of white in there um, because it's going to change the color. So I'm just going to grab a new brush and then use that to apply my black paint. Okay, black and white are done. So what I like to do to find my next value is to find the middle of the scale and mix that middle gray. That would be a gray that looks like it would fall directly in between black and white, rather than mixing all my values going down the line. For example, you start with white and you work your way one at a time until you get to black. Likely, if you do it that way, you're gonna get too dark too fast and you'll have to redo them, which it's not a big deal. You would just wait for the paint to dry and then you can paint directly over it. Um, but it's just easier if you find the middle and paint that middle value next. The goal here is to have each step gradually transition into the next. I'm going to speed this up, but you'll be able to see me mixing a variety of grays, and then I'm just going to plug in the ones that are closest to these slots that I need to fill.
Okay, so that was your practice. We are going to make a nine step value scale with black, white, and seven grays in between. We're still after the same goal. Each step of the scale should gradually transition into the next. Although this time we are going to pay attention to craftsmanship on top of our value transitions. Go grab all your painting stuff, some thin cardboard, a dark pencil like an 8B, a ruler, and some painter's tape. Start with your pencil and draw it out. Your value scale can be any size. I measured off of one of the creases in the cardboard. It was made by a machine, so I know it's a straight line. And I made each of my nine rectangles measure one by two inches. Again, yours can be any size. You'll see that I am extending my pencil lines. They are longer than they need to be. We will prime our cardboard with titanium white, which is opaque. It's going to cover the brown in one layer. If we put it on thick, you don't need to add medium to the paint for this step. I'm also painting right over my pencil lines. When we were drawing this out, we extended our pencil lines and this is why. Once this paint is dry, we'll be able to just match them up and redraw them right on top of the paint. I let the paint dry for a few hours and now I'm coming back in with my ruler and just finding my lines again and redrawing them directly over the paint with my pencil while continuing to extend my lines longer than they need to be. Now I'm getting my paint and my medium all ready, and I'm going to start the same way that I did on my 7-step value scale that I did in my sketchbook, and I'm going to start by putting white on one end of the scale and black on the other end of the scale, both directly out of the tube. And out of the tube means I didn't mix it with any other colors. It's okay if it goes from the tube to the palette paper, and if I add some medium, that's okay too. It just means that you haven't mixed it with any other colors. We will paint each of these nine sections in the exact same way so that in the end they all have that flat appearance and the scale looks uniform. Start with enough paint on your brush so that you don't run out of paint mid-stroke. If you do, it may be possible that you just need a bigger brush or you need to load more paint onto your brush. Begin painting with a few downward strokes while painting over the pencil lines. Then switch the direction to horizontal strokes to get into the habit of getting the paint to fully cover the surface. We're not worried about smoothing it out yet. We're just getting the surface covered. Then switch back one more time to vertical brush strokes, and this is where you will smooth out any texture you see. You can have a lighter hand when doing this step. It helps to smooth the paint and leaves less brush strokes. Feather out the paint that falls outside the section that you are painting so that there isn't too much texture to paint over when we get to it. And feather out just means rather than reloading your brush, remove some of the paint just on your paper towel so that you can spread out the paint as thin as you can. Don't forget to paint over your pencil lines. So we won't have to spend a ton of time later hand painting perfect lines to separate each section. We will use tape for that and I'll show you how later, but for this part, go over all four sides of this rectangle. Look from a few different angles to make sure you don't see too many lines from your brush and make sure you definitely don't see any big globs of paint. If you do, just smooth them out. You're gonna see some brush strokes. You just wanna make sure that they're all going in that same vertical direction. Rather than, you know, kind of on a diagonal or a curve, you just want them straight up and down. Again, this is just for continuity in the end. We're gonna paint each of these nine sections in the exact same way. And in the end, it'll all look the same. 
The next one we'll paint is our middle value. So let's mix a gray that looks like it's right in the middle of our black and our white. We've done this already on our seven step value scale. So have that nearby because you can use it to evaluate how you did with your value contrast the first time. It will help you see which adjustments you may need to make. So for me, I thought my middle value was a little bit too dark and it was hard to maintain that same gradual leap in value. Uh, so I'll be mindful of that and try to make my middle value a little bit lighter than this one. Next, I'm going to split the difference between that middle gray and my white and mix up a value that's right in the middle of these two. I think I have the right value mixed, but I just want to make sure. So I'm going to take my palette knife and put some paint down. And it looks like this one needs to be a little bit lighter. So I'm going to add some white. You guessed it. Now let's split the difference between that middle gray and black. All right, five done. Now let this dry overnight. Okay, my paint's been drying all night and it's time to fill in these last four values. I've mixed my number two value and now I'm using my artist's tape. I'm gonna place each piece of tape just to the side of my pencil lines so that each pencil line falls inside the rectangle. Once you get it in the right place, run your finger over the edge of the tape that is closest to your pencil line. Press hard because you wanna create a seal so that no paint gets underneath it. You may need to redraw your lines like I did. If you can't see your lines, just remeasure off of the five values that are already dry. Now get this side down, give it a good seal, and we're ready to paint. We don't want to use too much water because paint that's too watered down will get underneath the tape and your lines won't be straight if that happens. If that does happen, just wait for the paint to dry completely and redo it. Acrylic paint is very forgiving and since titanium white is opaque, you can just paint right over any areas you want to improve. I'm painting these in the exact same way as before, first up and down, then side to side then up and down again to smooth out the paint. The main difference is that you want to have a bit of a lighter hand so that you're not like jamming paint underneath your tape. You're more like flowing the brush next to it or on top of it. Remove the tape while the paint is still wet because when acrylic paint dries, it's almost like a layer of plastic. So it would seal over both the cardboard and the tape. So if you want to go pull the tape off when the paint is dry, it's probably gonna rip a lot of that paint and cardboard along with it. If you forget, it's okay. You'll just need to grab like a really sharp X-Acto knife and a metal ruler and you could line it back up and lightly cut you know, in between the tape, along the tape, tape's edge. Uh, but it's just easier to pull the tape off when the paint's still wet. Um, you just saw me a few seconds ago measure the width of my tape. My tape is one inch and um, the width of my rectangles are each one inch too. Um, so I'm going to have to tear the tape in half a long way to get it to be able to fit um, without overlapping my already wet number two value.
as I was tearing this last piece of tape off. Uh, down there at the bottom, it started to pull the cardboard with it. So if that happens, just um, don't keep pulling. Place it back down and then go up to the top and pull downward toward that rip um, pretty slowly. Value scales are awesome. They might seem really tedious, and they are, or they aren't. It depends on your personality. But it's such a great way to understand how to control your values, especially when you get into your painting. You want your objects to look real, and that's what value is going to do for your paintings. This is a great tool. You're going to use it all semester, hopefully beyond. If you want another challenge, do a 20-step scale. I've had students do it before. Um, just keep in mind all these things and let me know what questions you have. Here's the finished piece.